Questions 20 to 26 in the ASA green paper. Question 20, the RF value for cysteine on this paper is, so to figure out the RF value, you've just got to divide the distance that the compound moves up the paper from the starting point over the distance that the solvent moves up the paper from the starting point. So for cysteine and solvent S, well, solvent S moves up the page 15 centimeters and cysteine moves up the page six centimeters. So basically it's six divided by 15, um, which if you go through all the maths and the working like I've demonstrated on the page, you get 0.4. And if you do the RF value for solvent T, you get an R, uh, sol RF value of 0.25 for cysteine. So the really one important thing, the one trick, the only way you can sort of muck this up aside from just a couple silly mistakes in the um, maths is by not taking into account the different distances that the solvent moves up the paper. So you've just got to remember that solvent T moves up the page 12 centimeters, while so solvent S moves up the page 15 centimeters. Um, so the correct answer for question 20 is C. Question 21. In figure one, the highest R value for the following amino acid is for. So the trick to this one is you can sort of eliminate a couple of the answers just by using a bit of logic. So the you'll notice that the two amino acids that we're talking about is leucine and phenylalanine. So immediately we just try and locate them on the page. They're right next to each other, quite high up on the um, solvent S front. And you'll notice that leucine is a little bit lower than phenylalanine in terms of the solvent S direction. So since we're trying to find the highest RF value, we can immediately rule out leucine for solvent S because that is lower than, solvent, uh, than phenylalanine for solvent S. So immediately um, A is ruled out. Okay, and we can do the same thing for solvent T. So you'll notice that leucine is much um, more towards the right, as in it will have a higher RF value for T um, than phenylalanine. So immediately we can rule out phenylalanine for solvent T, which rules out D. So now we're left with trying to find, figure out two RF values, um, the RF value for phenylalanine for solvent S and, the, uh, and leucine for solvent T. So leucine for solvent T is going to be um, 9 on 12, which is equal to 0.75. And phenylalanine for solvent S, that's a bit of a tricky one, but it's going to be um, equal to 13.5 on 15. So obviously that's super rough to try and figure out. We've got this sort of decimal on top of a fraction. Um, what I'd do personally is I'd sort of try and approximate this in my head and try and figure out whether this is bigger than um, 9 on 12 slash 0.75. So one way to do that is to make both of these two RF values have the same common um, denominator. So in this case, let's choose 60 as our common denominator. So 9 on 12 is equal to something on 60. So to go from 12 to 60 times by 5, so therefore we times the top bit by 5. Um, and to go for our RF value of 13.5 on 15 to something on 60, which are times that by 4, so we get uh, 27, 54 on 60. So from there, you can clearly see that 54 on 60 is greater than 45 on 60. So therefore, this is the greatest, uh, the larger RF value. So therefore, the correct answer is going to be C for question 21, that the phenylalanine in solvent S has the highest RF value. So question 22 is pretty similar to what we've been doing so far. Uh, we've basically got to figure out a amino acid with the same RF value in both solvents S and T. So let's try that for glycine. Glycine, 15 on five, sorry, five on, five on 15. 
um, versus, so that's 5 and 15 for S, and for solvent T, our F value is going to be 4 on 12, which is also equal to 1 on 3. So obviously the R value for S and T for glycine is the same. So therefore, the correct answer for question 22 is A. Question 23, four amino acids are found to have the same RF values for solvent X, but different RF values for solvent Y. Um, they would most likely appear on a paper chromatograph as. So same for X, different for Y. If you have the same RF values for solvent X, in the direction of solvent X, they're all going to line up. Uh, but if they're different for solvent Y, obviously they're going to split up in the direction of solvent Y. So if we look at answer D, D is the most correct as sol in the direction of solvent X, they all clearly line up. So they all have that same RF value. Um, whilst for solvent Y, since they all have different ones, they're all sort of spreading out in the solvent Y direction. So towards the right hand side, they're splitting up, but upwards, they're all in that, they all have the same value. So D is the correct answer for question 23. Question 24. Five amino acids are mixed and a split of the mixture is placed in the same position of another piece of the same type of absorbent paper as was illustrated in figure one. In order to completely separate the five amino acids in this mixture. So to separate all the five amino acids, what you'll need to do is you'll need to find a solvent for which each of these amino acids have an individual unique RF value. So if we try that for solvent S, uh, so we have alanine, glycine, lysine, serine, and threonine. You'll see that serine and glycine, they unfortunately have the same RF value for solvent S. So therefore, we cannot alone, or we cannot only use solvent S to separate this mixture. So let's try solvent T. Um, for solvent T, for alanine, glycine, lysine, serine, and threonine, well, they actually have, they all have individual unique RF values for solvent T. So therefore, in order to completely separate the five amino acids in this mixture, you only need to use solvent T. And therefore, B is the correct answer for question 24. Question 25, consider the two statements concerning the amino acids shown in figure one. Uh, one, tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent S than does threonine, or two, that tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent T than does threonine. So firstly, let's locate tyrosine and threonine on the paper. Well, if say tyrosine had a greater affinity for solvent S than did threonine, as according to statement one, what we'd expect to see is that tyrosine moves up the page further because the more affinity you have for a certain solvent, the further along you're going to travel with it. So therefore the higher on the page you're going to have, you're going to end up. So in this case, tyrosine does indeed have a uh, greater affinity for solvent S than does threonine as it has end up higher up the page in the solvent S direction than threonine. As for solvent T, however, uh, so for solvent T, tyrosine does not have a great affinity for solvent S. So for solvent T. So tyrosine does not have a greater affinity for solvent T than threonine. And that's because threonine is more towards the right, slash it is further up the page in the direction of the T solvent. Um, so because that three, uh, threonine spot has a is a greater has a greater rf value than the tyrosine spot for solvent t we can say that statement two is incorrect that tyrosine does not have a greater affinity for the solvent t than the serine because it has not moved further up the page and therefore statement uh so answer b is correct for question 25 that uh statement one is true but statement two is incorrect
Question 26. Consider these three statements concerning lysine and the two solvents S and T shown in figure 1. Lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for the paper in statement 1. Lysine has a greater affinity for solvent T than for the paper in statement 2. And lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for solvent T in statement 3. So let's take a look at lysine. Um, well, when the affinity for the paper is equal to the affinity for the solvent, then the RF value is equal to 0.5, i.e. the spot has moved halfway as far as the solvent has. So if we move further than that value, that halfway point, we can essentially say that the, um, that the substance has a greater affinity for the solvent than for the paper. But if it is under that value, RF value of 0.5, so it has moved less than half as far as the solvent, well, what essentially that means is that the amino acid has a greater affinity for the paper than for the solvent. So in this case, lysine has moved up the page um, nine centimeters in the solvent S direction. The RF value, uh, sorry, the distance that it would have moved up for the, if the RF value was 0.5, would be about 7.5 because the total solvent um, distance moved is 15 centimeters. So um, lysine therefore has moved over that halfway point, uh, meaning that for solvent S, lysine has a greater affinity for the solvent than for the paper. And the inverse is true for solvent T because it only moves one centimeter in the solvent T direction. So therefore, um, we can say that lysine has a lesser affinity for solvent T than for the paper. So overall, statement one is correct, and statement two is wrong. Statement three, lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for solvent T. That is definitely true as, um, as lysine moves over that halfway point for solvent S, but under the halfway point for solvent T. So we can conclude, therefore, that D is correct in question 26, that statements one and three are true, but statement two is false.